Okay, folks, sorry about that. We didn't, we had some technical issues here, too, apparently. The devil's really attacking the stream tonight. Anywho, for those of you who don't know this sparkling image of a bass, I am Holy Wolf 526. As you recall, we were having some technical issues downstairs with Minecraft Monday. So I said we'd do the programming notes and the weekly devotional up here, basically, in the master area. Let's do the programming notes. This will, of course, enable you to get your Bibles and join me in Matthew chapter 1. This week's our rotationary stream, you will be saying TGIFF. Thank goodness it's Fall Out Friday. So Jimbo and I will once again be traversing the wasteland. Who knows what great evils we will battle together. And that little black beam song is one of those. My, was my kitty slash sidekick cyber. Hi, Cyber. So anyway, back to the business in hand. Um, that's my kitty. So, second issue at hand. Second programming note is, as I've been having since start of December, Tuesday, December 24th, we're going to try for about 9 p.m. I've got some other Christmas Eve things I need to do, so you don't know, you never know. I might be a little late, might be really late. We'll be the first ever, hopefully annual, Holy Wolf Christmas. I encourage you to make some hot cocoa, sit around the tree, or put the tree up if you haven't put the tree up. I have my trees downstairs. And tunes, I sing some of your very old Christmas songs on Twitch Sings. It should be an enjoyable, lovely evening. Enjoyed and loved by all. Well, most. <laughs> on that note, this weekly devotional, once again, we have been discussing Janet's Christmas story. Janet is a young lady at church that I was attending for a while. One year, she put on a play using the kids and some of the younger teens. And we've been discussing some of the points in her story. We'll have Matthew 1. I will attempt to I'll tell you what, why don't I why don't I jump over to BibleGateway.com and we will read together. Sounds like a plan to me. Let's do it. Hmm, that's what we want to do. What? I'm going to hit the be right back button here and we'll try to connect over there. Oh, wrong button. Hang on. Are you guys still with me? Not entirely sure because um, I've never really used the software before, but the software reports that you are at least getting vocal. Oh yeah, you guys are with me? Cool, hey, this is actually pretty neat. I kind of like it. We might do this kind of devotional stuff more often up here. I kind of like this. Um, so anyway, we are reading Matthew 1 and 2 tonight. What you are seeing on my screen is BibleGateway.com. I'm using the new King James Version, as I, as I tend to do. So if you are not using the King James Version, your wording on this may be different. If you don't have your Bible, feel free to follow on the screen. If you do, feel free to read one as I do so. And I know, there's gonna be, as you can see, there's some big names here. I'm probably going to mix a few of them up. So bear with me. Matthew 1. 
the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begot Isaac. Isaac begot Jacob. And Jacob begot Judah and his brothers. Judah begot Perez and Zerah by Tamar. Perez begot Hezron, and Hezron begot Ram. Ram begot Aminadab. Aminadab begot Nashon, and Nashon begot Solomon. Solomon begot Boaz, Boaz by Rahab. Boaz begot Obed by Ruth. Obed begot Jesse, and Jesse begot David the king. David begot Solomon by her who had been the wife of Urah. Solomon begot Rehoban. Rehoban begot Abijah, and Abijah begot Asa. Asa begot, begot Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat begot Joram, and Joram begot Uzziah. Uzziah begot Jothran. Jothran begot Asa, and Asa begot Hezekiah. Hezekiah begot Manasseh. Manasseh begot, begot Amon, and Amon begot Joseph. Joseph begot Jeconiah and his brothers about the time they were carried away to Babylon. And after they were brought to Babylon, Jeconiah begot Shelati, and Shelati begot Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel begot Abu, Abed. Abed begot Elohim, and Elohim begot Azor. Azor begot Zadok. Zadok begot, begot Achim, and Achim begot Elud. Elud begot Eleazar. Eleazar begot Mathan, and Mathan begot Jacob. And Jacob begot Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. And so all the generations of Abraham to David are 14 generations. From David until the captivity in Babylon are 14 generations. And from the captivity in Babylon until Christ are 14 generations. Guys, I'm going to take a quick reading breather here. I am really liking this because... I mean, look at this. It's actually scrolling along with, uh, with me. That's pretty cool. I like that. Anyway, we're now in the section, Christ born of Mary. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as followed. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not one to make a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared before him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she will bring forth a son, and you shall name him, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord to the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call him Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. And Joseph, being aroused from his sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and took him his wife, and did not know her till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. And as part of reading, we're going to jump to chapter 2 as well. Wise men from the east. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod, the king, the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen a star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Herod, folks, was not a very good king. If he was in a great mood, people loved him and people, you know, he was people loved him and were amazed at how wonderfully and justly he could rule. But when he was in a mood like this, eh, people tend to die. Oh wow. Basically. Your odds of being taken care of and being ruled well and surviving under King Harad were pretty much based on Harad's mood. It was commonly thought in a sense that it was better to be a pig than to be <laughs> ruled by Harad, by Harad. But let's continue with our reading. 
So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea. Oh, I'm sorry, we skipped verse 4. We'll go back to verse 4 then. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired to them where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus is written by the prophet, but in Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are not the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring him, bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. When they heard the king, they departed. And behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they came into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then, being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country another way. We follow this up with a flight into Egypt. Now, when they had now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and stay there until I bring you word, for Herod will seek your young child to destroy him. Remember what I mentioned earlier, folks? Yeah. When he arose, he took the young child by night and departed for Egypt, and went and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord to the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt I called my son. Massacre of the innocent. Next section, next topical section is the massacre of the innocent. Then Herod, when he saw he was deceived by the wise men, was exceedingly angry. And he sent forth and put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem and its districts, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had determined from the wise men. Then was fulfilled with spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, A voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation, weeping, and great mourning. Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted, because they are no more. The home in Nazareth. Now when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel. For those who sought the young child's life are dead. Then he arose, took the young child and his mother, and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard that Arch Archelaus was reigning over Judea instead of his brother Herod, he was afraid to go there. And being warned by God in a dream, he turned aside into the region of Galilee. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled by which was that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene. Yeah, sorry about this, not jumping right back in, folks. I'm still trying to learn the rope. I like the software, but I'm still trying to learn the ropes. So just bear with me. There's like a technical glitch or something. Because I kind of really don't know what I'm doing yet. Oh, change capture. Okay. Okay. Um, as I said, you know, please bear with me on any glitches we've been having in this part. I'm still kind of learning this piece of software. So, you know, 
Now, with that, now I'll already have to do with tonight's point. Because tonight's point is they made an impact by doing basically, by doing the above things, by doing the above the, by doing the above things in which we mentioned tonight, the wise men, little they truly know, would make an impact to millions. In their own way, the family in Janet's story also made their own impact. So the next question, which again, as usual, you can respond since Twitch kind of changed how they do the whole VOD thing with the comments. If you really want to tell me your answer, you kind of have to message me personally. Or obviously it's going to hit YouTube at some point. You know, on YouTube, you can comment it or message me. Your question is, why is it important to make an impact to the kingdom of Christ, regardless of the size of the impact? So, that's your devotional this week. Courtesy of, I'm not going to say the only commissioned pastor on Twitch, because I really don't know if I am. But, at least, a one of the commissioned pastors is not the only one, so... See you guys Friday for Fall Hog Friday. I'm out of here. Enjoy the week.